here, okay? <laughs> what do you want from us? How much more do you want from me? <laughs> and we're back. Hello, girls. We're back. And we're back. We're back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Cha, cha, cha. Hey y'all, it's your girl Taylor. And Toya. This is The Ho Bag. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite streaming platform and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at underscore ho bag. That's underscore H-E-A-U-X-B-A-G. Keep up with our shenanigans. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Mommy shark. <laughs> Niggas gonna turn us on and be like, uh, do we have the right podcast today? It's the whole bag and we back. It's us. With the bull spit. <laughs> the bull spit. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too when you were shaking her. I said she gonna spit up on Taylor's shirt. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. Uh today we are talking about Mr. Hobo Sexual and Little Miss Caretaker. Did you see them uh I'll let you do Twitter news. So into Twitter news. If you guys hear any <laughs> cuckooing in the back or cooing, it's not cuckooing, right? Cooing. <laughs> it <on>. is <laughs> Little Miss HB Jr. <laughs> she is here with us. She's so. a product of the whole bag. <laughs> right. Don't mind. Um, there is a little trend going around. That's the Little Miss or Little Mr. memes. Um, and it's basically a little character that is saying little miss whatever or little mister whatever. So one, um, this thing, on this guy on here said these little miss memes dot dot dot. Some of y'all. Oh, it's some of the most unfunny work ever produced by the Internet. And I thought what was funny is the person that responded. <laughs> and they put Little Miss hating every trendy thing as a personality. <laughs> but a lot of these were like very. Oh, this is my favorite thing where he's closing the person's lips saying, shh, let people enjoy things. I love the Little Miss, the Little Miss memes. They're so disrespectful. <laughs> I do, too, because one of them that I posted was uh, from myself. Little Miss. Oops, I'm sorry. I just saw this. <laughs> Because that's me. Like, I'll read somebody's message or something and pay it no mind. And then when they get on Facts. my ass, I'll be like, oh, my bad. I'm, I just saw this. Facts. So at least like 10 people got in my inbox and was like, that's you. That's you. That's you. Yeah, we be busy. God, like moving around. We can't take and drive all day. Like we Adulting. out here doing this. We Who has time to sit up and text all goddamn day? First of all, girl, I was asking. Uh, so I was uh, talking to my partner. We're going to get off this real quick. I was talking to my man and I was like, you don't text me like you used to no more. He's like, because you don't ever respond to my messages. You take you six hours to pick up the phone. I be busy. I don't be scrolling. Like, and then sometimes it's a relief. It's a anxiety relief to be able to scroll your timeline and not have to respond to people. Am I right? Like, who wants to sit up there responding to people every day? Like, it's funny. Um, sometime this week I had to get on <clears throat> one of our team's meetings and <clears throat> excuse me. So we get on Zoom and first of all, whoever made breakout rooms, your mom's a freaking whore. <laughs> Hate breakout rooms with a freaking passion. Like, oh, it's so annoying because it's like five of us just sitting there looking at each other like, don't nobody want to start it. Don't nobody like, OK, we got 30, 30 got seconds 30. left. I'll mm -hmm. be the click. But anywho, I, we were talking about how. Basically, in, in my field of work, I talk on the phone all day. Mm -hmm. I have to respond to applicants. I have to just and even when I was in sales, I talked to people all the time that it's like once I click off of work, I'm tired of talking okay. to people. So when people text me or call me, sometimes I really look at my phone and I'm like, I know you ain't calling about shit. Like, I don't want to sit on the phone with you and just be like or the texting. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? It's, what it's you really doing? childish. It's, it's it's stupid. I got a call the other day and I was I didn't even respond. And then the person wrote me on Instagram. I had called. I fucking saw it. All my notifications. Come I to the same it. Phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that. What you call it? You wrote 147 <laughs> weeks ago saying check your DM. I seen it. I seen it. it. Golly. We ain't talking about nothing. And then all y'all call me right now. How's the baby? She's alive. Like <laughs> Now you see what I mean? People like, hey, how's Jojo? She's still with us. I mean, she she, she don't talk. She shit sleep and, and does this. Like, <laughs> you know what? It, here's the pro. 
Next time somebody asks, how's the baby doing? Do you tune in on Sunday? I mean, on Tuesdays? Oh, there she's, we go. She's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Lord have mercy. So but wait, I'm wait, which character did you think relates to yourself on the Little Miss memes? Did you find one that you thought was you? Girl, all of them. It was like <laughs> Little Miss Toxic, Little Miss uh, Social Anxiety, Little Miss Hates Her Parents, <laughs> Little Miss, uh, it was a lot of them. Little Miss Homie Hopper, because I used to be Homie Hopper. <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't think I've seen that one. <laughs> I laughed so. I was like, these are so disrespectful. <laughs> they are very disrespectful. And it's even more disrespectful in the group chat that I'm in. And they started labeling us with them like, okay, hold on, ho. Probably gets a Little Miss Yo ass. You're going to be very upset. You know what? I saw one and it was the niggas be broke page. Uh huh. And she said, Little Miss, I only fuck with niggas that money that got money, but I ain't got shit to show for it. <laughs> Woo! That one was disrespectful. <laughs> Post that. <laughs> Say less. <laughs> but you know, I'm sorry. So we're gonna get into this. So um what made me what made me want to talk about this today was, you know, rent and gas are high as hell. And so it's gonna be a lot of niggas trying to act right because they need a place to stay and they need some help. And so um, I was like, damn, you're going to have to have discernment when it comes to you want you want me to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to have discernment when it comes to choosing who to, you know, invest your time and resources into. Like, is it somebody that's, you know, actually about their stuff and they just on hard times because we all in hard times? Or is it somebody that <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> she don't like it when it's not warm. <laughs> OK, sis. All right. Well, just don't don't start crying on me, please. Um, is it somebody that is is actually worth your time or is it somebody that's just over here trying to play you and have a free place to stay? Because niggas are strategic as fuck. Yeah. They know, I mean, women are too, but we, you know, we're coming from a woman's point of view. So, I mean, that's just like when it comes towards the end of the year around, Texas. let's say November. Oh, how Niggas start getting, nah, niggas start getting, well, that part too, niggas start getting real, don't want to fuck with you because December coming around mm -hmm. and they don't want to buy you no gift. Mm -hmm. Or baby daddy start coming back around because they know that you finna get them taxes. Nick. So they got to start earlier so that way you think it's genuine. Like we think we stupid. Hey, keep your head on a swivel, sis. At all times. So I wanted to ask, so I did a, a little poll on Instagram. What's the difference between investing in a good man and taking care of a homosexual? So the way I questioned it was, um, would you hold down women? Would you hold down a man if he fell on hard financial times? I thought that was a very, what's the term I'm looking for? It was a very, um, for lack of better words, like a broad question. Because I, I had a way I like wanted that. to answer it, uh -huh. but then it, it was too many variables to it. Like I would I would hold a man down if when him and I first started dating each other, he was already on his shit and he was about his shit. Mm -hmm. And then something happens. You know, I was there to see something happened. I know what you about. It's unfortunate. I'm going to be there for you. I agree. But on the other end, if I'm coming into something with you. I got to start asking questions out the gate. You don't have a savings account. You don't have anything going on to where if you lost your job tomorrow, you didn't have no type of something. No, nothing. I agree. I agree. And I to add to that, I think I would it, it's circumstantial. I would yeah. be OK with it if like when we had Landon Taylor on here, he was like, OK, this person may not be great at this, but what are their strengths? So like if right. you're good at everything else. But I know that you're just fucking horrible at managing your finances. I'm great with managing finances. I'm gonna need you to trust me and I'm gonna need to see that you're making, you know, strides, taking strides towards not spending recklessly or not. You know, if you're outside, which is part two to this, to this thing, if you're outside all the time, but you broke all the time, it's like I can't be with you. How you ain't got nowhere to stay and you claim you broke but every time i see you you outside you man well you can be outside and be broke but you managed to come up uh, on a hookah you got enough money to get you some wings you got enough money for that 40 sack that you want to smoke and you got enough for a bottle from the liquor store mm. every week mm. so to me it's not that you don't have no money you just your priorities are fucked you'd <laughs> rather get fucked up every week instead of saying you know what i ain't gonna get high today now take granted that 40 and save it. I'd rather be hungry instead of being high. I mean, I'd rather not be hungry instead of being high. I agree with you. I was just going to say, I understand sometimes if you're just on a hard time, sometimes you just need to be lifted in spirits. Um, but at some point, you have to stop being lifted in them spirits because uh, them spirits going to be uh, your demons. Yeah. 
So I get that. So 68% of women said that they could hold a man down with, you know, circumstances like, you know, they live together already um, and he shows effort. But somebody was like, hell no, how long he's down? I'm actively I'm actively trying to get out of hard times. I, I agree. Two broke people don't need to be together because that just sounds like a bad situation. Right. Two, two struggling people. Because it's yeah. like, unless y'all genuinely have a plan to get out of y'all struggling situation. Or... I think two broke people should be together. Then you're making more room for the rest of us to be Hello. together. Hello. Y'all can both ride the bus together. Y'all can make y'all bad decisions together. <laughs> I'm saying shit. See each other through the struggle. <laughs> Someone said, I feel like you calling me out right now. I love my girl. She taking care of me. Bye, nigga. It's, I got to go back and see who that was. <laughs> it's this nigga from New Orleans. I don't know if he be in Houston that often. Oh. But that's just hilarious. You know, I, I'll never forget when I first moved to Houston, I was talking to this one dude and he was like, you know what, Toya, I'm going to tell you, you're the type of person that has to be very careful. And I guess use discernment because you're so nice and you're so giving that niggas out here. And he from Houston. He was like, man, dudes out here, they'll smell that shit like a shark. Absolutely. And they will use that shit against you. And it's I'll never forget that he said that. People. If I don't know what it is about their parents that don't teach them. And granted, we live in Houston, but we were not raised in Houston something about Houston native they have that play a pimp mentality and and take 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 mentality yeah. like it, that's a it, that's a pimp that's some bullshit. you give me and I take ain't ain't no genuine like it's just it's it's wild and I then mix that with it. the music that we have and all of that everybody in their head is which is sad it's like <clears throat> the downside that I saw to that question just reminds me of our reality right now you got one side of men that will call a girl stupid if she does hold her dude down through the hard times. And then you got the other side of men that'll say, well, you look at all these hoes out here not even being down for they dude, but then once I'm in return and that, well, what is it? Either we are going to be down or we go digging bitches. I don't understand. Like, what the hell am I supposed people to do? People don't know what they want. Damn if you do and damn if right. you don't. They just want, people want to get on the internet and be angry about something. Like, nobody's happy. Like Even if it's, if it's a woman that was, and I, I think that the term holding somebody down is used very loosely too, because it's not always about financials. If I'm holding you down as far as. Through a depression. Through a all of that, yeah. Through through a death, like that that, that person that you're dealing with could be the bread maker. That don't mean that everything else that I'm doing is still not holding them down because facts. I'm still your your shoulder to cry on. I'm your diary. I'm your pillow. I'm your freaking uh, punching bag. I'm everything facts. else that's still holding you down facts. to go out there and get that bag. To go out there and be a better man or whatever the situation is. So I just want to go in and this is kind of going off topic, but still here. Black people, we have a horrible relationship with money. Why is everything about money? Why is that the center of our reasons to be with people, our reason to stay with people, our justification for us doing shit? You cheated on me? Yeah, but I paid you your way through college. That does not equate. That is not equal. Like if somebody, like you said, you could hold, you said punching bag, excuse me. <clears throat> and we see a lot of men who have the upper hand financially will punch, not physically or sometimes physically. Oh. <laughs> they beat down on their women. They talk down on them because it's like, oh, you're not doing nothing. You're not worth anything. She's worth a lot. She just isn't, isn't the one bringing home the bread, but she bringing, she carrying every other weight that you won't, that nobody else will deal with of yours unless you had that money. Yep. Take away your finances. Who want to fuck with you? Oh, <laughs> that's a tough pill to swallow for y'all but no nobody want to swallow it and I had to learn that I, I hope they, I hope everybody learned that during the pandemic like shit like and you know what I don't want, again I don't want to make it seem like we're bashing men so let me bring women into it because there's a lot of women now especially Miss Ari because you cuss us out every two every two business days on Twitter call us broke <laughs> just for having an opinion on some bullshit you said <laughs> let it be <clears throat> I'm gonna say it the BBLs the BBL. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And the pretty faces and the weave and the makeup. Mm. Strip all that away and let's put your personality on the plate. Trash. There's a lot of men that wouldn't put up with your shit either. Facts. Had it not been for that fat ass, had it not been for them perky titties, and had it not, had it not been for the hair and the makeup. I mean, because besides all that, remember when we were on... Uh, not the what's the shit clubhouse that showed that a lot of people should have just shut up oh my god what if podcasting ain't told you shut the hell up 
that was a precursor that we didn't pay attention to, to Clubhouse. <laughs> Niggas be on here just saying, pulling shit out their ass. Like, shut up. No wonder you're an Instagram model. <laughs> Instagram modeling looks good on you. And you know, I appreciate some of the ladies that just don't say, like, they know they place. Uh, what's the girl name? Um, I never even heard her voice till this day. She was fucking with Lori Diddy. Lori, bitch, you doing a good job. Uh, oh, you listen, doing a good job. Lori don't say shit. And I love it. I love that for and you, And you know what's crazy? I love Beyonce, but I got to talk about it real quick. Beyonce don't say nothing either unless it's coached because I think she spoke one time and, and people <laughs> tore her ass to shreds. And so, because <laughs> we know she didn't go to school for, for grammar. We went, she went to school for singing and dancing. And that's okay. And yeah, she's from Houston. Sorry, that, Houston. That's shit. Texas education system is trash. Y'all can come to my inbox if you want to. I'm going to stand 10 toes Statistics. down on that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I think we talked about this one time too. Like when it comes to you being an artist or you having any type of brand, just be quiet sometimes. Yeah. Just be quiet. That's what we're learning as we're gaining more popularity. I got to stop commenting. I got to stop responding on I YouTube. Be, yeah. Because she'll, she'll screenshot the shit out of some shit and be like, oh, I want to cut this motherfucker. I'm like, just get out of the comments. Especially. I learned my lesson. What was the young man that said, uh, he said, uh, Daisy, Daisy Mexican? She, I thought she was a light skinned black. I had to give him a history lesson. And it was, but it was well articulated though. It wasn't ugly. But if you scroll through our YouTube comments when it was Daisy, you can always, I think people are starting to know when it's me and when it's you commenting back. Because you're I, always nice. Thank you for yeah. tuning in. I'm like, well, <laughs> back in 1987 during the slave trade. <laughs> now you Fun can get fact. that part of me on Twitter from my account. But I feel like with the whole bag, you don't know who it was. Yeah, I'm learning to We can both be like, that wasn't me shit. I'm learning to shut up. But, but I hope uh, bro man with the Mexican, the light skin, you know, it's all good. I hope you're doing back in. <laughs> but no, so I wanted to touch on my next question. I asked people, could you hold somebody down if they were outside on the scene? I would. I put the word always, so I think everybody's like, no. Yeah. But um, just to speak in general, even my man got in there and was like, hell no. I seen it. I was like, nigga, you made me outside. I was damn sure going to comment. <laughs> but I didn't. Growth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, and I just didn't have time to go back. I was looking this morning. I was like, nigga, what are you talking about? But it, it's it's crazy. The I, I should have took the word always off that people read into it that well, that deeply. But people are outside together all the time. You meet a lot of people outside. Like, so what is it? <clears throat> what is it about? What is it about people being outside that turns people off? You think? Well, <sighs> and I couldn't do it because I tried it. And it should piss me off. Like, nigga, stay, sit the fuck down sometimes and hang out with me. Let's be boring together. And that part. So yeah. I, I think that you got to meet people where they are. Uh -huh. If I met you like you did with, with Justin, if you met him, he was you were outside. He mm -hmm. met you. I mean, and you were outside. However, if we're getting to know each other and you see me outside, I'm outside for a reason because mm -hmm. I'm bored and it ain't shit else to do. Because when I'm outside... <laughs> I'm vibing, but I'm still like, damn, I could have stayed at home. Facts. But even if I'm at home, there was nothing else to do. So I'm here. Now, if you meet me where I'm at and I'm outside and then when you're always trying to schedule something with me and I choose the club over you or yeah. oh, my bad, it's the homie's birthday. My bad. My girl just got a promotion. My bad. I got it. Well, damn, bitch. Every weekend I turn around, mm -hmm. it's always something that brings you back outside. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to step away from you and be like, you're not really ready for anything serious yet. So I'm going to let you have it. You said that perfectly. And, and I think I want to piggyback off that when we were younger, you know, coming out of college, you got a lot of quote unquote friends. So you got people graduating, getting right. new jobs, starting what getting married, all, all this stuff. So you always celebrating every weekend. And as you get older, you learn like who your close friends are and who's worth coming out because these are just energy vampires. Absolutely. They are financial vampires, too. They want to sit up. here. Everybody having to. Uh, I got 48 line sisters. If all them hoes got had babies this year, I can't show up to every baby shower. That's just what it is every week I gotta buy diapers god damn yeah no you gotta learn when you can say yes and when you can say no and then if you're trying to date somebody seriously that's when you're like okay you know what I see potential in this man I'm gonna have to tell Taylor who's not my close friend hey sis I gotta sit this one out but later and on and I think too that kind of goes back to when you get married it, and it's different it's different levels of life too mm -hmm. if I'm single and I don't have any kids <laughs> I can hang with my single friends that don't have no kids they're taking trips they're doing this they're doing that I have a child so my close friends a lot of them don't have kids mm -hmm. but they are they are <clears throat> they also 
My bad, y'all. Something wrong with my throat. They also respect me throat enough baby. as a hell no. <laughs> Absolutely. Anywho. I, just, I need to throw something in there. <laughs> Negative. They, um, they also respect me enough in my parenthood that they know Toya got more shit she could be spending her money on mm-hmm. than taking pointless trips with us here mm-hmm. and pointless trips with you there. Mm-hmm. And they won't also be offended that I didn't go with them to Aruba for their birthday. Mm. It ain't my damn birthday and right. I'm not going to love you no less and they're not going to love me no less. Right. And I think the same thing should go back. If you if you start dating me and you know I'm an outgoing person and I don't like to sit down because I be bored, mm-hmm. then as another person, I think um, Crew Season spoke on this and they were talking about date somebody and actually date them and learn what they like. And Yes, don't just do the basic you shit. You thinking your right? bitch boring, but whole time you it's taking you. her to go smoke hookah every weekend and to a fucking club and she likes doing shit like going hiking. And maybe and you boring. Thank you, because that shit is really boring. Really I don't want to smoke hookah. I don't even like hookah like that. But we do it because we were bored and we were stuck in Houston during the pandemic. Now I'm addicted, damn it. <laughs> shit. I'm trying to wean myself off of hookah. <laughs> shit. Got me out here smoking these flavored cigarettes. <laughs> smelling, smelling like blueberry and uh, mint. <laughs> My hair stink. Shit. Y'all, when I, we first started this podcast, we was outside trying to promote heavy. We was in third ward. Every day I came out, I smelled my braids. Smelled like Hennessy, blueberry, and mint. And I was like, nigga, I got to go inside <laughs> or I can't get my hair done. Oh my god! I don't know how you bitches with bundles do it. Shit! I know them bundles the stain. Sweat underneath. Ooh, child! I see somebody posting. They was like, "How are y'all wearing them helmets during this heat?" God damn! <laughs> it is hot as. Yeah, look, I said we we're gonna go cuss that much, but Lord have mercy. Okay. Yeah. So no, I can't. Me personally, even though I'm outside, uh, what did he say? Adjacent. Yeah. I'm outside of Jason. I couldn't be with somebody only because I did it and they was always outside chasing fucking nothing because this nigga was lame. And I know he don't watch this, but if you did, you was a lame nigga, yo. Um, <clears throat> I was outside though. It's like, what you outside for? Like, And I think that part too, that, and that's what I was kind of getting to. <laughs> if you're just outside to be outside, mm-hmm. then now I got to question you and ask you, why are you outside? And Facts. if you can't even answer that for yourself, you got some soul searching you need to do. Mm-hmm. And especially going outside. back to you being a damn hobosexual, mm. you need to take all that outside energy and do something else productive Find with it to get it. you some damn money. Please. I can't st- what I can't stand is one of them niggas that like to go outside and eat off a bitch tab. Mm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I seen somebody mm-hmm. now nah, I can't get too deep on that. Cause then they deep. gonna no that cause they gonna know who it is. And I ain't trying to put him on front street like that. But I will say this. Okay. It's a lot of couch surfers. Yep. That I know of, because I don't know them, but I know a lot of women that have allowed them to sleep on their couch. Y'all need to start calling these niggas out, because I be seeing them on Instagram tearing bitches up and mm. acting like they got money. And I'm like, I know that ain't who I think it is. I know, boy. Because ain't you the same nigga that be sleeping from couch to couch? Girl, it, it's so wild. The crazy part is, you would think it'd be the ugly bitches with the low self esteem. It'd be these badass yeah, bottle workers. Or bottle girls that be having these niggas sleep on their couch rent free, beating on them, eating all their food up, eating all their baby food up. And it's like eating all their baby food up. Girl. Let me let me tell you this, because one of our homeboys, I think it was one of our mutual homeboys on Twitter, tried to down bottle girls. <laughs> I got a lot of respect for y'all motherfuckers. Me because too. it ain't too many. I'm talking about y'all be y'all be holding them bottles up in the air. <laughs> Thir- every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Shit. And y'all got to put on them fake smiles. And y'all got to entertain niggas. The entertaining part, you're an entertainer. I would change my damn shit to entertainer. Oh, yeah. Don't let these people talk down on your a, job. That's a lot of work. You have to deal with drunk ass niggas every day. And then, you know, you still, you got to stay in shape. You gotta, yeah. It's a job. Because I heard them, them, um... They're very Their discriminative. Are are horrible. They treat them. They like pimps, Logan. Yeah, yeah. They like on their ass. Like you know what? Shout out to the working girls. Because y'all could have been. I mean, not down in strippers, but y'all could have been shaking y'all ass. I'm talking about coochie hole out. But y'all not. So bottle girls are for the girls who just don't have no rhythm. That's what. Because I, <laughs> I mean, all you gotta do is go left to right, right. I'm crying. How do we go from here to over there? But we made it. Nigga, we made it. What would you say are some signs of a good man worth investing in? Because um, I have zero. <laughs> no, if you know he's, you know, a provider at heart, right? And something something seriously just happened. Like, I don't know. He The video, the one that's circulating that was talking about the guy when they first met. 
Uh-huh. That's a very, very, very good point. Actually. I did see that. You want to speak on that part then? Um, I ain't watched the whole thing, but I understood what she was talking <clears> about. Because I have a lot of friends. So I put in the, so I asked women and I did like a poll or whatever. The women that said yes have been married 10 plus years and I know their personal business. They've held their man down when he didn't have a job and he allowed them to thrive later on. So it's like they took on the load and then later on they relaxed and he's taking on the load. It's a, it's a partnership. When you think about a relationship, it's not the man is the boss of the finances because sometimes these niggas suck at counting if you can't see it be 30 niggas with a hookah that only got four four uh things so it's like they don't understand mathematics at sometimes when even when it comes to their finances so i think um have knowing a man's potential uh, no because potential gets you fucked up you have to he has to show you in the beginning like you know you know he has this degree you know he has these skill sets you know that he's you know taking these strides he's actually not going outside as much like he's really trying to be disciplined in what he's doing and he just really fell on some hard times I think that's okay to deal with if you knew him when he was up and then he's you know anybody that's up can always get it back um now the nigga that's always oh man when I you know it's usually them rappers <clears throat> I'm in between jobs them t- and I feel bad saying teachers but a lot of musicians are teachers and they're like you know when i get off i'm gonna make it and i'm touring with such and such a lot of these people there's a lot of musicians in our inbox i will say that i ain't never heard of these niggas i ain't never seen none of their music i don't know if they gonna make it off the floor that's not for me to find out but i'm not willing to invest in somebody like that because that just ain't my thing an artist is a very difficult person to invest in and we're also not 106 in Park. I don't know why y'all keep coming to us. We, I, I, I really don't know shit, but hey, thanks. At first, I thought it was what's it called because of Reeks. That <laughs> but it. that was a year ago. He, we ain't surfaced his video in over a year. And y'all still coming in our inbox. Hey, I got this new single drop and da 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 Okay. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll speak on the video. Basically, in the video, <clears throat> it's a man and woman that I don't even know if they're married or they're just a couple. So let's just say they're a couple. And the guy is uh, basically talking about how his woman did something that no other woman has ever done. And at that moment, he knew that she was the one. Oh. When he and her first started dating... He always made sure to be chivalrous, open the doors, um, paid the tab. She never had to go on her purse for anything. He was buying her things, just being the provider that he wanted to be g- from a genuine standpoint. And she appreciated that. He fell onto hard times. And it came to one situation where these couples invited them out. And in his head, he was like, man, I didn't want to go out, but I knew she did. So, all right, let's go. Now, in the midst of them going out, he said he was calculating things like, damn, French fries going to cost this much. A drink going to cost that much. What do you want to drink? I'm going to get a water. We're going to get her this to try to make the tab as low as possible mm-hmm. so he could pay for it. Mm-hmm. Her being her, before the tab came, she pulls her phone out and she cash apps him the money. He sees the cash app and he's like, damn, she really did this shit so I can pull my card out and I can pay. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the comments, of course, it's always just a freaking downward spiral of everybody's opinions. on. Couldn't be me. Okay, girl. Bye. (laughs) I think I went before and I love to come with my own damn conclusion before I go to the comments. I loved it because I thought it was just a man that really fell on hard times and his girl didn't want him to look a certain type of way in front or feel. I'm not even going to say look. Feel, feel a certain type of way. And even look, because some of y'all be judgmental. Uh, I, y'all know me right. and my brother are like this. And so like we went out one time. Jordan looks older than me. So we went out and I had, he had to be like 16. I had the job at the time. And we went to Waffle House and the tab came. And so I pulled my card out. And this clown ass, you know, Waffle House people ain't got no goddamn manners. <laughs> Damn, you going to let your girl pay for you? It's my little brother. But it's like, and I learned at that age, it's like, damn, the world judges men <clears throat> no matter what. And Jordan didn't feel the type of way. He was 16. He's like, it's my sister. He didn't think nothing of it. But then when I got to dating men, if like a man, if I was really hold, like feeling him, if he didn't have it, you know, I, I'd be like, hey, you know, here's my card when we walk in or whatever. Like, it's not, nah, I don't take care of niggas. Let me just... <laughs> 
put that out there. But if it was a, a situation like that, I would never want him to go home feeling less of a man in front of people. Like absolutely, that's not, if 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 I felt that way about him, I wouldn't be out there with him. And then I seen some girl was like, "I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna do this because if men's ego is that big, and I got to do this just for his ego and da da da." And that just let me know, like, okay, again, let's flip the script when it comes to social media because that's what a lot of <laughs> women always compare and contrast shit with. If it's me and my man and he don't ever gas me up in person nor in social media, it is going to make me feel a certain type of way, Facts. especially if I always see you glorifying everybody else on social media. Facts. It Facts. makes you feel a certain type of way. Facts. And that still does go back to my ego. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, you don't find me attractive. You don't. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. So if I am allowing my man to feel good in his man, whatever, macho, whatever, then I'm going to do that because that's my goddamn man. And I'm, I'm a, if ain't nobody else going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold my man down. Now, um, he need to be doing what he need to be doing and picking up the weight elsewhere while right. he's over here trying to figure out his ego and shit. But, <laughs> but again, she also said that that's who he was when they first started dating. Mm. So I think that goes back to it. Yeah. Would, you, would you hold your man down? I would definitely hold him Absolutely. down if that happened. Now... Like old girl said too, there is an expiration date on that shit. That's true. Now, if you've been down for... Girl, what is in the air? I don't know. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> LP trying to kill us in here, y'all. Help. <clears throat> Help. <clears throat> I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. She like, shit, we're in danger. <laughs> <laughs> she like, should I start crying? <laughs> Help me. I got, I got you, mama. <laughs> she got your titty. Look, baby, it's stressed out. <laughs> is the milk okay? <laughs> Don't take the milk, Lord. <laughs> well, she said she's just being loud. So you went back to sleep. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> but no, if, uh, I mean, I'm I'm not going to say, oh, you got 180 days. Like, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I am. I mean, no, no, no. Like, there's a time limit. Like, if if I just see like this just ain't going nowhere after I look up and I'm like, okay, but you know what? Go. Time limits really do <laughs> apply pressure. When people say apply pressure, okay, if somebody comes to you and they say, "Hey Taylor, man, I fell on bad time. Nah, I'm not gonna use you. I'm gonna say, "Hey Tim Tim," because we know you. <laughs> you're an absolute no. Hey Tim Tim. <laughs> I feel on hard times, girl. Can I borrow your couch for one month? Actually, I've done that for people. But you see what I mean? Uh-huh. But people start slowly but surely dragging. Oh, man, something else came up. I just need two more weeks. Man, what was his name? Two I ain't more weeks turned into two more years. Baby, I, I'm, I'm going to say this now. This nigga, he got kicked out of school and he needed to play. Then he was staying with his, who was my neighbor? He was staying with his girlfriend. They broke up. So then he was like, I, I would ask you to stay with you, but I know how you are. I was like, I'm glad you know. So he came back. He was like, I really need a place to stay. I'm like, that's cool. I was like, you got three days and you got finds a place to go. And at day three, hey, I, I, Jay, we talked about it. You better go find another bitch. See what I mean about a deadline, yeah, though? Yeah, absolutely. I think that was a, and that was a friendship. So we're going to carry that same energy into a relationship. If I meet you, you're doing good. Everything is going great. You're showing me all the good qualities of a good man. Boom, we get into a relationship. Slowly but surely, Six months down the line, everything is doing a 180. We need to come and reevaluate some I, shit. I agree. I think I was going to point it, put in, I know that the economy is down right now, right? So if you were in a, a field to where it's just going left and you're having a hard time, I get that. If you're a nurse and you just don't feel like you're getting any travel assignments because your, and your black ass don't want to go work at uh, HCA, you got to get the fuck out. Absolutely, because like, now you're choosing not to work. Facts. That's the difference. Yeah, so that that's when I start looking at like, oh, okay. But if you're, I don't know what industry right now. Uh, I don't know. I would say if you're in tech, because tech's doing a lot of layoffs. I'd be like, oh, okay, I see they're doing layoffs right now. Next year, your ass better be on that grind, or you better become a teacher. What I can't stand is a man because I've seen it before who loses his job and is too good to go fucking park cars, Uber, whatever. And you talking about, oh, I'm a hustler. I'm get it by any means. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm glad you brought that up. No, no the not. fuck you're not. You ain't, look, you ain't hit rock bottom till you sold that PlayStation. Listen. You ain't hit rock bottom till you sold that chain. Listen. Listen, and and that's when I can't. If you do that and you struggling, I can fuck with you. If you still out here trying to front for people, keeping your BMW and stuff like that, I can't fuck with that. Like you over here for images for other people, and and we out here. I'm I'm taking care of you, Nick. Please, good fucking bye. Now that I have a kid too, I'm with her daddy. But like, if I wasn't, <laughs> hell no, hell the fuck no. Nah. But that was all I had to say on it. <laughs> all right, well. <laughs> Um, on that note, do you have a Twitter? T- I mean, girl, oh. uh, not a Twitter tip. 
<laughs> I hope to. Shit. Uh, use discernment when trying to understand if this man is worth your time. Now, my good signs of a, signs of a good man will not be the same as Toya's. Will not be the same as yours. Mm-hmm. Same thing with a woman. Some people like good women. Everybody's preferences and lists is different. Use discernment. What works for you? What you can handle. But if it gets to the point where you're looking stupid. And you just like always on the back end losing your money and you feel like you can relate to call Tyrone too much? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. Uh-uh. <laughs> um <clears throat> my whole tip <clears throat> is going to be I have a three bedroom house. My guest bedroom has a very, very uncomfortable mattress. <laughs> <laughs> so you ass don't stay too long. <laughs> my whole tip. Make sure your shit is very uncomfortable or make the situation uncomfortable for the other person because people thrive in uncomfortable situations. So, sure, you can stay here for a month, but your back going to be hurt. You're going to want to get the fuck up out of my house. I wake up early. I'm making smoothies with my new, tr- my new, my, nye, 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 every morning. Turn music all the way I'm vacuuming, up. Mm-hmm. listening to Pastor Troy. <laughs> your ass going to wake up. <laughs> and on that note, bye. bye.